us offer worship to you to thank you for goodness and faithfulness and dear lord even to offer worship to you my god and my master and above everything dear lord to hear your word for us here we are my god and my redeemer praying that god you take charge of everything that we will do may god will you cause us that loving father to just be glorifying you in all our endeavors and in every event and activity this morning lord through the afternoon Gracious Father, you'll be, worth, you'll be with us, O oh Lord, and bless us. We thank you for the week that has ended. And now we thank you for the new day and the new week, O oh God, where we, be, we are beginning Holy Week tomorrow. Would you, Master, come through for us and bless us, dear Lord. In humility, we thank you and we invite your presence to be with us. This is our humble prayer of faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the church say, Amen. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kindly, I invite us to be upstanding, and I hope each and every one of us has a, a piece of the palm tree. If a palm, if you are not having, the ashes will be there to give us, uh, to give uh, to give each and every one of us. So kindly be upstanding, and we shall be praising God, and uh, we will be celebrating what the Lord has done. And today, may the Lord triumphantly enter into our hearts as we praise the Lord together. Uh, choirs, I don't, I'm not seeing you holding your. Uh, you, you, you are, yes, your palms, please have it so that when you dance, lead us even to swing and placing God together with it. May God bless us and may God lead us uh, the choir. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Can you just raise your palm like this? Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Now, today we're going to praise God in a different genre. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. Come on, come on, come on, everybody, let's go. This is how we sing. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wings. From power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. From power and love, our God. Our God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Don't and love our God. You can do better. God is an awesome God. is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Don't and love our God. Let's take it to our voices. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Don't and love our God. is an awesome God. is an awesome He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with we. From power and love, our God is an awesome God. He came to save us by His power and His might. Our God is an awesome God. He's thunder in His eyes and not in His foot. Our God is an awesome God. Hey! And the Lord, He was a joking one, I kicked him out of bed. It wasn't for no reason that He sent His Son. He's returning very close, so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. From heaven, from heaven above with we, some part and love our God is an awesome God. Some part and love our God is an awesome God. Some part and love our God is an awesome God. He came to save us by his power and smile. Our God is an awesome God. There is thunder in his footsteps, light in his eyes. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord, he was a joking one, I kicked him out of bed and it was the for no reason that he said his blood. He's returning very close, so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. With no power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. Now with your hands lifted, oh, he reigns, yes he reigns, he reigns, yes he reigns, he reigns, yes 
this morning. Yes, Abba, I cry out to you. You are my father. You are my sustainer. You are my everything, Abba, in the name of Jesus. I cry out to you with thanksgiving in my heart. I thank you, Abba, indeed. together. Hallelujah. 
Precious Heavenly Father, again, we come before your presence this morning, thanking you because you are a risen king. We thank you that you have been our father and that you have called each one of us this morning to come into your presence, to bow our heads before you and to acknowledge you as our king, a king that gave his life for us to come down and to die for us. We glorify your holy name, gracious Heavenly Father, for all the things that you have done to us, for all the good things that have come from you. And even as we bow our heads in your presence this morning, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accepted us as your children. Yes, we know that you have done things that we should not have done. We have followed too much the desires and devices of our own hearts. Father, we know, we examine ourselves and know that we have fallen short of your glory. And we pray that this morning you'll forgive each one of us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, put us right again, Heavenly Father, with you. Accept us as your children. Forgive us, gracious Heavenly Father, 
so that even as we come before your, your presence with petitions, then you can hear us. And we thank you that you have given us that assurance. Father, we bring our petitions to you this morning. We know that in our congregation, we have had a lot of misfortunes, people who have lost their loved ones, people who are sick in hospitals, many of them that we know that are lying sick in hospitals. And we are praying, Heavenly Father, that you may stretch your hand to them. Heal them, restore their strength, and they may serve you in newness of life. We know that there are those that have, are not with us because they are traveling, Heavenly Father. And we know the dangers that there are on the road, on the roads or wherever else. And we are praying, Heavenly Father, that you may be with each one of them. And that you may protect them from the evil one. Take them wherever they are going and bring them safely back to us. We thank you for those that traveled and are back. We cannot fail to thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have been their protector. We are praying for our church, Heavenly Father, even like today, when we are thinking about the less fortunate ones, those that are living with us, those that have no rent, those that have no food to eat. And we come this morning prepared, Heavenly Father, to be a blessing to them. For all those that have given something to bring to your people and to share with your people, Heavenly Father, we are praying that you may bless them and touch them also and fill their granaries that they may never lack. Heavenly Father, we are praying for our church again. We know that we have got many things that we are supposed to do. Things like finishing of the new sanctuary, bills that we have not paid. And we are presenting them all to you, gracious Heavenly Father, praying that you may be our provider. Whatever we are doing, we are not doing for ourselves, but we are doing it for you. Hear us, Heavenly Father, because it is your work that we are doing. We are remembering our country and the many things that are going through. People are disgruntled for whatever reason. Maybe because of lack of understanding or, or just for the sake of uh, being disgruntled. Heavenly Father, we are praying that you forgive us. But we are praying that you may be with our country. We may be with the leadership. And for any other country that is represented here today, Heavenly Father, we are praying that you may be with these people, wherever they are. Then for the remainder of this service, Heavenly Father, we are committing it into your hands and praying that your presence will be with us, that you will send your Holy Spirit to minister to each one of us this morning, touching us and speaking to us individually and telling us that you are there with us and that you will never leave us. You will never leave us, Heavenly Father, that you will always be with us and that you meet all our needs. For this and many more, Heavenly Father, that we have not even mentioned, we believe that you know them and that you'll hear us. And we are praying all this, Heavenly Father, because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll invite them, a minister now. For intimations. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Thank you, uh, the praise and worship team. May I first ask, even as we continue, is there anybody worshiping with us? As a visitor, kindly, if you are, do we have a visitor in the house? By the show of hands, Mugeni Yote, any visitor worshiping with us today? Yes, we have one behind there. It's just by the microphone behind. Kindly, ma'am, be upstanding. Yes, kindly feel free to tell us who you are and we'll appreciate. You have the microphone there kindly? Oh. Yes. I'm Kathleen Mudoni. I came from Krenyaga. I'm with my sister here. Thank you, Catherine. Is your sister in the house? Yes. <laughs> ah, sister, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mom Catherine. Feel free and feel in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord God uh, bless you. In the event that you're going back home, say hi or take our greetings to Kerenyaga. Can you say, is it okay? Ah, thank you, thank you. Allow me, we have quite a number of things today we want to bring to your attention. So allow me to quickly divulge into them. First, that this today marks the end of our lunch period. And therefore, in the evening today, we are not going to have our prayers. Because we shall end it in style, and we are ending it with an anointing, uh, anointing ceremony. After the service, our superintendent minister will guide us on the same. And again, uh, through his leadership, we are not going to be sleeping again. We are going to be praying every day in the morning, Monday to Friday. We shall be praying 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the morning. I expected an amen. 5 to 6. Feel free. How many of us want to go back to sleeping? How many of us want to go back to sleeping? Oh, you guys are good. So we are all in agreement, eh? 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning. May the Lord bless us and may the Lord guide us. We will be guiding you in those prayers every day, uh, Monday to Friday. And I believe uh, we are going to be blessed. If we had the time, I could, I could have asked two, three people to share the experience. But because of we don't have that time, allow me to hold it for today. Allow me now to give you those that are there. You have, may have gone through them in the bulletin, but allow me to kindly pass, uh, go through them quickly. Uh, that on, um, new members class began on Sunday, uh, Sunday the 17th, the 17th, and it runs all through again uh, every Sunday, 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, there, there is a notice related to the youth, which I will give them during our offertory time, uh, so they shall be prepared for that. But again, they have a Bible trivia, memory verses, and these are they're doing today, uh, the 24th. But that the one I'll give them is the one which is coming uh, this uh, beautiful and lovely weekend. Uh, we shall be having nominations for the few that are retired, that are, their times have uh, ended for the, uh, for the leadership of the church, and the nominations we shall be guided on the 14th uh, of, of April on how to go about, about them. The classes, uh, the confirmation classes will be beginning on 14th April. If you are there, you need to join the confirmation class. Kindly, kindly register at the information desk. We continue appealing for those who wish uh, to be volunteers in the social, social outreach pillar to kindly come close, uh, come and forward your name. We have told you who we are expecting, probably, like the filing, accounting, data entry, and such like. Kindly feel free to register at the information desk. Uh, the Women Fellowship are requesting that uh, in, uh, they are in the process of updating their data. And to facilitate this, ladies are reminded to fill uh, the registration forms at the information desk. Kindly do that so that the Women Fellowship will update their data in due course. And again, you are also reminded that in the event that you have not re uh, rather renewed your subscription, to kindly do so, the details are there. You can find them, get them at the information desk for the same. We have quite a number of districts which are meeting today and others next week. And I think you know, if you belong to any district, you know when you're meeting. Uh, district 5 meeting today, District 11 uh, meeting today, District 7 next Sunday, District 12 next Sunday, uh, District 2 will meet on Sunday 7th, uh, and we thank God for that. Uh, the beautification of the church today has been done courtesy of Frederick Skinoti and Mumbi and Wamboi Vande. We thank God for you, and we thank God for that. Uh, next Sunday, by the grace of God, we shall have the Kahagoros family and uh, Abore's family uh, doing the same beautification of our church. The, the minister on duty this week that begins tomorrow, we will be having the Reverend Dr. Nene uh, in the event that you need any pastoral assistance, any pastoral visit, kindly feel free to talk or to contact us through uh, the Reverend Nene and the event uh, that uh, you will not go through. Uh, feel free to contact any other minister and we shall come in to uh, help. 
uh, on on Tuesday the on Tuesday the 26th we shall be having uh, the the World Prayer Day which shall be commemorated here or rather we shall be holding it here beginning at 2 p.m. in the morning uh, rather 2 p.m. in the evening all through to 4:30. Uh, so kindly prepare. Uh, this is headed by our uh, Women Fellowship, but we are requested all members to join in those prayers on Tuesday 26th at 2 p.m. through to 4 p.m. Then we shall again break and come back for the uh, prayers for the Holy Week. Beginning tomorrow, we are going to be observing uh, services every evening. Uh, every evening, Monday to uh, Thursday. And Thursday shall be uh, the uh, Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday, it depends on which school you went. Others call Modi, others Monday. It depends on which academy you joined. But we shall be having the Monday Thursday on uh, this coming Thursday. So we are prepared and ready to wash amigo just as did that laid uh, in that example. And again, on the Friday, we, on Friday, we'll be having uh, services here. 7 o'clock service, Swahili service, and then 10 a.m. We'll be having combined service at 10 a.m. So kindly, please don't come at 11.30. Otherwise, otherwise, you'll meet us going out. So come early at 10. We shall be having that service uh, um, at, at 10 p.m. It will be combined service. I have a letter or, or a card of appreciation from one, um, our daughter Helen. Um, this I, write, I read as it is, it's not a long one. I, Helen, together with my entire family, would like to thank the ILUC family for your heartfelt condolences, emotional and moral support, your prayers and, and financial support, and above all, having stood with us at, this, at the trying time when we lost our mom. Words cannot express how grateful I am, but may God, may God Almighty uh, bless you. All this card from Helen. Helen was a sign language interpreter who lost the mother, and the burial was, was done on Thursday, and they said the, kind of, the card of appreciation. We, had book, we have books which are here, and these books are given towards the new sanctuary. So whichever book you get, the, um, the, the proceeds will go towards the construction of the new sanctuary. We have, the, uh, have these books, Turn of Faith at 1,000, The Challenge of para Parenting at 1,500, Heart to Heart at Kenya Shillings 1,000, Able to Survive at Kenya Shillings 1,000. Uh, this is done through courtesy of Gra uh, Grace Kim uh, the author of these books. If you buy one, kindly, if you get one and you did one, kindly at the information desks, you will get the, the teacher Eric Ibaya. And in the event that you will not be able to do that, feel free to come to me and we will definitely uh, do this. This is aimed at um, um, building of the new sanctuary. Allow me now to ask the IT team to project the, uh, how we worshipped God uh, the past week. Uh, this is how you did. We thank the Lord for the continued support in terms of uh, uh, some the ministry, your contributions. May the Lord come through you and help you and lead you through. The new sanctuary stands apart and we're still appealing through the fundraising committee and the leadership of the church. If whatever, may, whatever pledge you made, feel free to redeem it anytime and God is going to bless us together even as you do that. Now, um, so that I invite uh, the reader of the word. Uh, after the service, after immediately just before we end the service, during the anointing time, you will come with your gift. I know there are those which have, given, have been given through uh, in kind, like the clothing, uh, the food, uh, the, and they are at the information desk. Others are here. Uh, our, our super will bless each and every one of us, and for that. And for those who have monetary, you will give it when we will be coming for anointing. We'll lead you as you line up to come for an anointing. There'll be an ash here. You can drop whatever it is. And again, if you're going to use your phone, if you be using your phone, the account number will change. The account number will change. It will be a lent gift. You can write it lent gift. It will go a long way in helping the needy. This is to fulfill Isaiah 58. As you fast, remember to go and bless uh, those who are needy because this church this time around we are going to employ the ministry of 
presence. If somebody is hungry, give him food. If somebody is naked, do not just pray. Give him or her a something. If somebody is sick, not just pray. Go and visit ministry of presence. And I believe we are going to go far in that. May the Lord richly bless us. May I now invite the reader of the word to come and take us through the reading. We shall get our two readings, starting with the first one, Zechariah chapter 9, and I'll read from verses 9 to verse 12. Zechariah verses, uh, chapter 9, verse 9 to 12. I'll start reading. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Verse 12, return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I'll now move to Matthew 21. So a second reading, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 1 to 10. Matthew 21, verse 1 to 10. I'll start reading. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? That's the word of the Lord. Yes, as the choir lead us in this, I've forgotten to tell you that if you're giving any, anything in kind, just register. Even if you're going to be unanimous, just register what you have given for easy uh, follow-up of it. Thank you. Praise and worship. We shall all stand and sing a hymn together in preparation of our hearts.
pray our heavenly father in the name of jesus as i share your word how i pray that you'll use me as a vessel and the lord almighty shall be glorified in our lives may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find favor before you this is my prayer in jesus name amen before you sit if you have your palm you may want to lift that palm Today, we normally uh, say it's what, Sunday? Okay, you may want to lift it a bit higher. They were shouting and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. I, I wish someone had a photo. I, I mean, from here, you look so good. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in. Blessed is the one who comes in the name. Amen and amen. You may have your seat. Good to see us in the house of God today, uh, being a Palm Sunday. Uh, the topic, uh, the triumphal entry. And I want us to concentrate on a topic, the Lord needs you. Just to give us a background of the day what was happening, because all four gospel give an account of the triumphant entry. When the crowd was shouting, the crowd was there shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Just, but just one week after what appeared as if great favor from men, the same crowd again participated in crucifying him. I want to remind us today that don't struggle so much to get the favor from men because it does not last. Today, people will lift you up there. Tomorrow, they will speak very negative things about you. I don't know for those who have been bosses in one time or the other, you occupied an office, and the staff were you know, speaking well of you, saying that they have never seen such a kind boss like you are. Only later, a few months down the line, you hear stories of how they are talking about you. Brothers and sisters, may we seek the favor of God. Hallelujah. We want to ask ourselves why Jesus probably decided to, you know, ride on the donkey. And we have been having that conversation since morning, the first service. And one of the strongest points has come for this. He adopted, the, you know, humility uh, riding on a donkey as compared to a horse. The other, the donkey more represented peace because military leaders by then, political leaders by then, used, of course, to use horses to make statement. But for Jesus Christ decided again to represent peace that he comes with peace or in peace. But one that carries power, and I'll be mentioning this a little later, that it was to fulfill the prophecy of uh, Zechariah chapter 9 from verse 9. If the digital team, you can be in a press to give us uh, uh, Zechariah 9, 9 at, uh, as it has been led to us. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you. Righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, uh, the fall of a donkey. So Jesus here is coming specifically to fulfill prophecy. The Herodians will try to say actually that the religious of the day, they did not want to kill Jesus Christ at this particular time because a lot of things was happening in the town and many people had flocked to the town because 
there was a religious activity. This was not the best time for them to take such a drastic action to kill Jesus. Some theologians argue that Jesus Christ, knowing that his time had come, pushed for this season. Because by getting to Jerusalem, having all this crowd, and for a time, it, it appeared as if he wanted the crowd to make that statement that, yes, I'm the king. He did not stop them. And of course, he knew that this, of course, will send another message to the religious leader of the day who will not be happy that he's attracting attention even to the masses. So some theologians argue that for Jesus Christ, knowing that the time had come, he had to do what he did. Where I want to concentrate is Jesus Christ sent the disciples to go to the city and tie the donkey and the uh, colt from its post outside a certain house and bring it to Jesus for use. Bring it to Jesus for use. And the only exp uh, explanation that the disciples were to give to the owner was the Lord has need of them. The Lord. That is the only explanation. Just in case they ask you, why are you untying the donkey and the call? Just say this. Just give this explanation and it will be enough that the Lord has need of them. Today I stand here to remind you that the Lord needs you. Hallelujah. Won't you help me to preach to your neighbor that the Lord needs you? Let me start by sharing my story. I think when I came for the revival meetings way before I became a super, I think I shared the same. Many years ago, should be more than 20 years ago, I was, I was to join Form 1, and I remember hearing these negative stories about the, uh, the school, the high school, that I wanted to join. And one of the negative news that was coming was that bullying, as we used to call it those days, monetization, was at another level. So I was being warned enough that the school where you are going, young man, prepare yourself just in case you are taken through some motion. Just understand that this is part of the process. You will be well. If you went through monetization in your school, probably I will not ask you the details, but may I hear an amen? amen. Nowadays, thank God that nowadays those things are not there. Thank God for the heads of school. Uh, who are doing quite a lot to make sure that our children are protected in these uh, new territories. So after hearing about that and what happened to that school, of course, psychologically, I start preparing myself. And I would be told this is what sometimes they tell you to do. So I was ready. If that's the only way of being initiated to the school, then I was somehow psychologically ready. And I remember that day how we uh, Around evening, my mother took me to the, to the school, uh, and I want to appreciate all the mothers. I don't know if you have ever known that most of the time that mothers are there, you know, tagging along their children. Yes, the fathers are coming up, but why don't we appreciate the mothers, that they are always there for their children. I remember going with my mom, it was around evening, and... Uh, after uh, the usual admission process, it was a time now to be taken to the dormitory. And I remember seeing a young man who was just about to pass the uh, administration block and he was, you know, requested to come and help me at least to settle or to know at least where the dormitories are and probably where I'll be spending the night. And the young man came excited and he, you know, he carried my, my box, uh, and I carried the mattress. 
and the, the young man looked very, very cooperative and also loving, you know, asking me, where are you coming from? And, uh, you know, until we got to the dormitory. And uh, that's where he looked at me and he asked me, young man, what is your name? And I answered, my name is Motahi. And he uh, asked, do you mean you have one name? So I knew that now I'm heading to trouble. So I responded my other three names uh, very, very quickly. And then he told me, number one, I want you to know that in this school we don't joke. I said, yes, at least of course I had heard the, the, these guys don't joke. So the first instruction was that the f very first bed in the dormitory, he told me that you'll be sleeping here in the very first bed once you get to the dormitory. And he told me the reason is because this place is very cold. And you from once, we want you to be the people who at least absorb that cold before it gets to us. So I was shown my praise just as you, the entrance. Now the second thing that he did, he told me, young man, uh, you have a mattress? Yes. And then I, I saw him taking off the polythene paper of a mattress. I hope you know that the new mattresses, they have the way they carry those uh, polythene papers. So he told me, young man, lift up your hands. So I cooperated. We were only the two of us. Luckily, a majority of them had gone to, you know, pray games. So we were only the two of us. So he told me, lift up your hands. And I did. I cooperated. And he made me to wear that polythene bag. And uh, he told me, young man, as you've heard, we don't joke in this school. So don't dare remove that polythene bag. Because from today, that is your gown for preaching. And I want you to start preaching now. By then I was not born again. And he's here giving me some assignment. He's telling me, I want you to start preaching now. And I want you to go to classes and tell the children that Jesus loves you. Go up to where the, the, the praying field. Let the children know that you, that you are you're preaching and that Jesus loves them. So I was there with the polythene bag. I was in Form 1. If this is how I look now, you can imagine Form 1. <laughs> I hope you are not laughing at me. So I was there. And of course the guy disappeared. And what you know, if you can remember when you are new in a place, people look alike. In Form 1, everyone looks like the brother of the other, if not the same person. So you, you don't want to risk and put yourself into trouble. So, you know, I started doing my thing, but still with the polythene paper on me. Now students started coming back from, uh, you know, from the field. And here I am, a new student, with this polythene bag, I, I don't know how to preach. I don't know where to start. Though I was given instruction, I don't know what to say. So I was just there. And I remember when they came, it was like a big kind of show or a drama. And they were surrounding, I mean, wondering, this is a new person. I mean, what is happening here? And I was there and I didn't know what to do. And I had, I remember even now, I had two of them speaking behind my back and they were saying, you mean nowadays? The principal is admitting mad people in this school. <laughs> Luckily, I had a cousin in Form 2. So the cousin appeared. Uh, only the cousin to find me with that polythene bar. And he's asking, cousin, nini ni naendelea hapa? And I'm telling him, I've been told to do two things. One, to preach the gospel. That this is the gown for preachers. The second thing is that I dare not take out this polythene paper. So at least because he was formed, he, 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 of course, he, he tore the, 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 the paper bag and he told me, cousin, don't mind. That's how I was introduced to form, form, uh, my form one. But do you know what? By 
Form 2, the end of Form 2. I had given my life to Jesus and I was fulfilling that prophecy. I was going through classroom and the field telling to a student, give your life to Jesus Christ. The prophecy had come to pass. The second prophecy had to wait several years. When I was, I became a preacher and I was given this gown that represent my position in the ordained ministry. And I normally tell my clergy ministers, yangu niliweka ya karatasi, kabra sijaweka hii. That's how I was introduced at Form 1. Even when I started preaching, it was only the passion of sharing the word of God. Little did I know that I spent my life just speaking the same word, that Jesus loves you. That there is hope to the dying world. Amen. There was a way of God communicating that you are needed somewhere. And I'm here to tell someone that God needs you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God needs you. Unfortunately for this donkey, and probably that's where a majority are today, for this donkey and the court, they were tied somewhere in the city. Some translation talk about outside the city gate. At that point, they were not useful. But for Jesus Christ himself, being God, he knew that these donkeys... The court can be useful. The donkey can be useful. And that, therefore he sent the word that please go and bring the court and the donkey. But again there was that challenge because it was tied somewhere. And I'm here to probably remind someone that maybe are you tied like that donkey you are not able to serve God at your level and at your capacity because you are tied in one way or another. Allow me to pose this question. Are there ropes holding you back? Are there ropes that keep you stuck? That you know too well that you can do more for God. You can do more for God, but somehow you, you, you are tied. Deep down in your heart, you know, I, I've been called for greatness. I've been called either to do this and this for God. But somehow you feel that there are things that are holding you back. Jesus Christ, we normally call him the anointed one. He, he comes to untie the ropes that are holding you back. Actually, the Bible talks about to break every yoke. And I pray for your life. May every yoke that is holding you back be broken in Jesus' name. They are still, there is still more work to be done. The Lord needs you. The Lord Jesus Christ is in the business of untying donkeys, setting people free. If, if, if you think about these donkeys strategically placed in the city gate, but yet at the point it was not useful. Some of you, you are strategically pressed, but yet even in yourself, you know too well, even though I'm here, I know that I'm not that useful. Maybe even in your organization, you know too well that this is what God will want me to do in such an organization. But somehow you feel you're tied, you, you have the desire to do more for God, but you feel you are not achieving the master's goal. And most of the time is that a majority of time we think that God can use other people. We think that there are other people who are better than us. I know there are people who feel that, you know, that the idea that God is waiting on you to use you in a powerful way, it can't sink in their heart. Because for them they regard themselves as ordinary either men or women. But I'm here to remind you 
that God specializes in using the ordinary. Hallelujah. That's so called ordinary. God can use the same thing that is, has been termed as ordinary for his glory. Some probably, they, they, they say, maybe I lost some years. I, I wish I had given my life to Jesus Christ when I was young. I don't know if you have ever come across people who kind of discover their life mission in their old age. And sometimes they feel, as, I, I wish I had this liberation when I was my 20s, my 30s. Let me tell you something about what the Bible says. In Psalms 92, 14, the Bible talks about that even in your old age, the Bible says they, they shall still bear fruit. Hallelujah. They shall still bear fruit even in old age. That means even, by the way, when you have this supernatural grace in your life, sometimes as you get older, the more you become fruitful. I trust that my ears are in the ministry. I be more anointed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm here to encourage someone. Don't think that probably I wish I could have given my life to Jesus or discover my life mission some years ago. This is the time that God wants you to hear this message and know that God can use you. God can anoint you. And again, let me say this. All of us, we are not called to the preaching ministry. All of us, we are not called to the choir. But there is something unique that only you, that you, can be, uh, that you can be in a position to do it. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. May you fulfill your mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people probably have been tied to certain jobs. For many years, they have been tied in certain jobs and positions. You know too well, you know there is a scripture that says, arise and go, this is not your dwelling place. For some, you know too well, that even though I'm here in this particular organization or job, this is not my dwelling place. And maybe you have been hearing that in a voice telling you, it's time you make a radical decision and start pursuing your vision. Because just to say that something is good is not a guarantee that that is the purpose or the will of God concerning your life. So my prayer for us in the name of Jesus Christ, that may you be in the right place at the right time in Jesus' name. That if you are probably to serve an organization for three years, or for four years, or five years, may you not spend another day beyond that which God meant you to do. Because it's dangerous also to overstay in a place. Some probably, they are tied and they need to be loose from infirmities. You remember the case of the woman who had the issue of blood for 38 years. 38 years. There was this weakness, this infirmity. And, 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 and I, I'm convinced that probably she could have managed to serve the purposes of God more better. Why not for this infirmity? I come from a school of thought that believe that sickness and infirmities is not the will of God for our lives. I'm a strong believer that by the word of God, we were healed. I'm a strong believer that, oh yes, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. And therefore, just in case there is that infirmity, a weakness that probably does not allow you to become that which God wanted you to be. Today as we participate in this anointing, anointing service, may you be healed in Jesus' name. Please don't put yourself down maybe saying that they are better people and God probably can go for them. If Jesus Christ can use a cult to fulfill his purpose, what about you? If, if, if God can use, can see the value of a donkey, 
What about you? I I'm here to tell you that you are important in the eyes of God. You, you are very important. I don't know what probably your boss has ever rebelled you to. Maybe when they talk about those people who are not probably productive, or even for some who are not lucky, maybe you came across teachers who are not careful with the, their words, and that probably they spoke negative things against your life and where you are going concerning your future. All unfortunately for some is parents. Maybe the parents at one time or the other mention this negative word that you'll never amount to anything. Today I stand here as a servant of God to tell you that you shall fulfill your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The greatest thing for all of us is to serve the purposes of God. But again, you have to allow God to use you. And that's the reason why today you are being reminded that God needs you. Please don't compare yourself with other people. Or probably you say you don't have what other people have. Nobody is sufficient for God's work. Nobody is... Hakuna mtu anaweza simama mbele ya Mungu na aseme ya kwamba I have all it takes to do your work. Never. That is not the work of God. Every time people were given mission by God, they protested. When, when, when God will speak to the young prophets that I'm sending you to this community, they protested. They were feeling inadequate. They were feeling, no, this mission is so big for me. I want you to understand that there is no day that probably you will ever feel if it's God's work that you have all it takes. Every time you have to rely on God. Every time you have to rely on the grace of God. Every time you, you have to remind yourself, unless God you go with me, I will fail in this mission. And today, I come to remind you, don't lean on the arm of the flesh. The arm of the flesh will fail you. Lean on the grace of God. I know I'm speaking to people that some of you, the spirit of God has been ministering to you. That I want you to start doing this. And some of you, you have been protesting and probably you are saying, no, this mission is too big for me. Please know that it is not by power. It is not by might. But by the Spirit of God. For some of you, maybe it's not in the ministry here, in the church. Maybe for some of you, it's the family. The family you are coming from. Maybe you are the first generation of believer. And God is calling you that I want the family altar to be strong in that family. When you look at yourself, you wonder who am I? And maybe my brothers are blessed financially more than me. Who am I to stand before my brothers and sisters and to tell them, let's go back to the ancient, uh, the, the ancient ways. But here God is telling you, my child, I will be with you. I will help you. That when you stand in those family gatherings, it will not be about you. It will be me speaking through you. Amen. Hallelujah. But will you allow God? We talk about uh, uh, triumphant entry to Jerusalem. But Jesus Christ is asking where he can be allowed. Either in our families, in our business or organization. Do you know that not everyone is even comfortable to declare their faith where they work? Because they, 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 they like shy away from our faith. That even probably if we, you have that pastoral visit. Because somehow you don't want to identify yourself with that. Today I'm here to remind you that Jesus needs you. So that he may get to that organization. Even if it may start from the basic where in those board meetings you may tell the committee member just before we begin would you allow me just to start with a word of prayer hallelujah may you receive that grace to make jesus known in jesus name the donkey was fulfilling the prophecy Remember when we started, we started with Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it was fulfilling a prophecy. And let me say this, each one of us, we have a prophecy for our lives. Either knowingly or unknowingly, the Bible talks about that before you were born, there was a book 
that had been written concerning you. So there's that prophecy over your life. But again, listen to me and listen to me carefree. You can choose to fulfill prophecy, the positive prophecy, or like Judas Iscariot, allow yourself to be used by the enemy. Because we, we human beings, we have free will. You can decide. You can make your choice that for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Because the prophecy is there. So it's you to decide that as for me, there is a prophecy concerning me. And that prophecy, the Bible talks about, for I know the plans that I have for you, they are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. The Bible talks about your children will be taught of the Lord. The Bible talks about me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. The Bible talks about that wherever you are, fish shall go, I've given you that land. All these are promises that we have been given in the word of God. And you can choose to act on those promises to fulfill what Joel, the prophet, will say that in those days I'll pour my spirit in all fresh. But again, you can also choose to fulfill a negative prophecy. For example, nowadays they are talking about where we are heading that, you know, as days progress toward the end times, the things will be more difficult. Cases of suicide will be more. And there are people who will fulfill those predictions. Hear about probably chronic sickness. There will come a time that those chronic sickness will be more in the days to come. But yet I stand here as your pastor to pray for you that may you fulfill the positive prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be among the negative statistic in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Jesus had a plan concerning the donkey. And one of the things I want you to note is that the donkey received honor because of who she was carrying. You know, when you leave that account and the way people were throwing their clothes and, uh, you know, just to make sure that the donkey carrying Jesus Christ, you know, mm. stepping on them. Some of you the favor you have been receiving is because of the one that you are carrying. And let me, let me remind you, there, there, there are people who probably some have better qualifications than, than you do. But somehow God in his own wisdom has opened doors for you, not once or twice, because you are carrying him. Because as long as you are hosting him, carrying the princess of God, you will go to places you never thought that you can get. You will sit with the prince and kings because of the one that you are carrying. Because when you allow God in your life, when you allow God in your life, we talk about hosting the princess of God in your life. When you have the princess of God in your life, doors will open for you. But remember, they are not opening because of you as a person. Remember, don't forget that we are using the donkey today. It's only that you are carrying the king of kings and the lord of the lords. May, may I say this to someone? When God will lift you one day, because we shall hear about this. When God will lift you one day, please remember it was because of Jesus Christ. When God will give you that big office, please remember it was because of Jesus Christ. Never forget because it's easier for us human beings. To forget why some doors have opened for us. The donkey that carried Jesus never spoke. But received honor by stepping on people's clothes. Finally as I conclude. There's something that this donkey did. It gave Jesus visibility. He was able to be seen. Giving Jesus 
visibility. I mean, there were people probably, even they did not have time even to see the donkey or even have a second look at the donkey. And the donkey did not mind about that. It was carrying the king of kings. It gave Jesus visibility. And for you, that is the will of God. That you may not be seen, but let Jesus be seen. That it will not be about you. It will be about the king of kings. Wherever your testimony will go, because I have this strong conviction that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. That when you are blessed and your testimony probably reaches other people elsewhere, may God be seen in Jesus' name. That it will not be about you. Now the problem we have nowadays, the modern donkey want to be seen. The modern donkey want to be recognized. The modern donkey in ataka musafara ifike pahari simamishwe ili tuseme hii ndiyo punda ambayo imebeba Yesu. That's the problem with the modern donkey. But if God will use you, if God will use you either in your family, in that organization where you are, you have to come to a point where you say, it's not about me, it's about God. Either I'm acknowledged or not. Because some of you, God may call you just to be an intercessor in your organization. You have this ministry of getting there before anyone else. And you are there for 30 minutes lifting that organization before God. And when they start acknowledging those people who have prayed part in that organization, your name will not be there. Your name will not be there. But in Wadri, ah, the Bible says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. You may not be acknowledged by men, but there is a God in heaven. There is this Swahili song that talks about Mimi ni pungue na wewe. Mimi ni pungue. Wewe wongezeke. Mimi ni pungue. We we wongezeke wongezeke Yesu wongezeke sana mimi ni pungu we we wongezeke Let's stand our feet as the worship team leaders, just in a paragraph or two in that song. And some of you, the challenge is there. We are probably, you are struggling to let go. I'm here to remind us that it's not about us. It's about God. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Wouldn't we lift our hands and just sing a paragraph or two?
As you lift those hands before God, Father, that's our prayer. You need us in your service. But most of the time, in our human nature, we have struggled to let go and to let you be seen. Help us from today. That like that donkey, Father, which was not even acknowledged, that, Father, we shall just have you in our hearts. We shall host your presence. We shall go where you send us. We shall do as you com command us, Father. Even without looking for acknowledgement from men, may you help us, our Father. That we'll carry you to our families in Jesus' name like that donkey. We'll carry you to our offices in Jesus' name. In those organizations where we work, our Father, we shall be like that donkey which carried you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up. Humble yourself that he may lift you up. Father, may you help us as a church. For this is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of us, we say, Amen and Amen. Thank you. We may have our seat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Super. May God bless you. And we are grateful for what the Lord is doing to us. It's now time to give, to worship God with our giving. We will be laid as we do this. Ashes uh, will be walking uh, through the aisle if you need an envelope to plan your giving. And even the later uh, giving for uh, the Lenten uh, gift, kindly pick an envelope. As you do this giving, we will invite our youth uh, to come and do something. The, project, the payment number is already projected. We'll be inviting our youth as, they do, as, they, as we continue giving. The youth shall be presenting, making a notice of what is ahead of them. I can see them coming so kindly. Uh, may you continue giving as I invite our children, our youth, to come for that. Come. So are we going to this party? Oh, we have to go to this we party. Are, we are. Oh my God. It's going to be so fun. So lit. And what are you wearing? Oh my God. You know that dress? That dress? Yes. <laughs> it's this girl again. Jerry this, Jerry that. I think she's even obsessed with Why me. Why do you still talk to her? Why well, just to mob. Jerry! Malaika! <laughs> What's wrong? I just feel like everything is so overwhelming. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I know it's hard to feel overwhelmed with this new environment and everything going on. But that's, that's why me and Sophia yeah, are here for you. Yeah, we're here for you. You know, uh, we, we were just talking about like this thing that will get your mind off all this campus manenos. Yeah? It's a party this weekend at Nani's, Johnny's house. I don't think a party is my scene, you guys. Of course it's not your scene. Ebo, look at yourself. How are you dressed? Nays of your two little awapi. And the jeans <laughs> where? <laughs> Tell where do you show? Eh. Sorry. Yeah. Don't worry. I have this new shoes that my dad brought for me from Paris. And they're very expensive. Please don't show in them. See, they're the ones you got last week, yeah? Exactly. Yeah, they're very pretty. Ebo, try them on. Wow. Wow, eesh, wow, eesh. now you look red even. What? Hey, no more village girl vibes. So what do you say? Hey. Let's go to the spa. Hey. Uh, good afternoon, church. Now, if you want to watch this and much more, um, feel free to to get a ticket at the information desk. My name is Rose Odiambo. I am the youth vice chair. And 
Today marks the last day of announcing the long-awaited youth play titled Heaven's Gate Hell's Flames. Tell your neighbor Heaven's Gate Hell's Flames. Yeah, so the play is happening on Friday 29th and Saturday 30th and Sunday 31st. Uh, tickets are going for 500 for adults and 300 for children. So feel free to get a ticket for your children and even for yourself and for your friends, your neighbors, and every other person that you, you know um, uh, where you stay and even in your office. So the play starts at 6.30 on both Friday and Saturday and then at 4 p.m. on Sunday. At what time uh, on Sunday? So after you're done with the service, uh, go take your lunch and then come back for the play. All right? So these tickets are at the information desk. So after church, please go and get your tickets. Feel free to even like sponsor people. Uh, we want everyone to be at the hall on Fridays at 6.30 and on Saturday at 6.30 and on Sunday at 4 p.m. How many promises are they going to come for this play? At this side is just two people. In this side, three, four. Wow. Clap for yourselves. Thank you so much for supporting the youth and may God bless you. Thank you. May I kindly request us to be upstanding so that we uh, receive the offering and pray for the offerings. Let us pray. Loving Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this offering, O oh Lord, that your children have worshipped you with. We commit it to your hands, Lord, and pray that, God, you come through for them and bless them, meeting the master to the very point of a need. Be it is committed unto you together with that which has been given through pay bill, accept it all. For we commit it to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kindly, may you take your seats. Uh, thank you. Uh, we want to have just a short service, the anointing uh, service. Uh, we've been praying and fasting uh, for the last 39 days. Today is 40 days. And uh, we requested you to come with uh, food stuff to support the hungry, food, and you've done that more than even what we expected. May God richly bless you. I know even as we support the less privileged, God will remember us as well. And therefore, we want to conclude that session uh, that we've been having of prayer and fasting with an anointing service. The Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. The Bible talks about if any one of you is sick, let him call for the elders and let them go and anoint him. And the prayer offered by faith shall heal the sick person. Again, another translation talk about, uh, another verse talk about, and they anointed the disciples. They anointed many people with anointing oil, and many people were healed. Today, as we do this exercise, may there be healing in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Just stretch your hand to this anointing oil, even as we pray for it. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we sanctify this anointing oil. As, uh, as we shall be using it, Father, to anoint your servants, I pray that it will be a point of contact of your power. In the name of Jesus, the sick will be healed. Infirmities will go. Burdens will be lifted up. In the name of Jesus Christ. And because of this, Father, may you sanctify this anointing oil, for this is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So the ushers will guide us because we will we'll have uh, at least one queue, but when you get here, myself and JM, I will have two stations and uh, JM will be anointing members as well as myself. Come with that expected heart. It's not about us. It's about God. As we connect 
with this grace that has carried us for the last 39 days, that that grace, even on the 40th day, there will be power in the house of God. And even as we do that, uh, we shall have uh, soft trip background music, even as we continue with the anointing. Thank you. Yes, just a reminder that in case you have uh, something that you want to give, uh, the Asha now is here. Uh, thank you. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth Much less love and beauty and this world Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Your presence, your presence is heaven to me Past and present wrongs, redeemer of my past and present wrong, hold of my future days to come, holder of my future days to come, treasure of my heart, the treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you're merciful. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past, Redeemer of my past and present wrong, hold of my future, holder of my future days to come. Your presence, Your presence is everything to me. Your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence. Your presence is heaven to me, to me. 
to me, to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, oh
our King be lifted up.
revelation of Siyahu.
We declare in Jesus' name that they shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you even for the offer to the donations that your people have brought to your house. We pray that you may bless your people. Sanctify all these donations, all these sacrifices, the offer to the tithe. Father, we ask that you may sanctify them for your use, O God. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you. May God fight all your battles. May you come back here Sunday with a testimony of God's faithfulness. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may turn to the person seated next to you as we declare the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus as I invite the worship team to uh, kindly take over in Jesus. Joking while I get the mind of bed. It wasn't for the reason that he said his God is standing very close, so you better be believe. My God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. Don't fall. God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. Forever he reigns, forever he reigns. He's an awesome God. One more time. He reigns, yes he reigns. He reigns, yes he reigns. He reigns, yes he reigns. He's an awesome God. 
Lord, I lift your name, come on. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you bring my life. I'm so glad you came to save Let's do it one more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name.